Hey guys, so today's been a very memorable day. Um, two big events occurred today in my life, and I'm going to share one of them with you. And both of them are very painful experiences, but the, the one event I'm going to share with you, I'm also going to give some um, advice for how to deal with it. And if you don't know already from the title, it deals with death. And I'm just telling you in advance, I'm not on drugs or cocaine. The, my, I, my circle is under my eyes, and the reason they're swollen is because I've been emotionally ripped up today. Just I've been very emotional today. And for those of you who are going to probably say, you, why are you crying? I cry a lot, and the... The, the way I portray myself in a lot of my videos is for entertainment purposes, and I know I, I portray myself as some badass, um, kick-butt, ranting dude, but that's not really me. That, that, that's not really me. Um, this is. Anyway, I want to talk to you about death. So I believe it was Thursday, um, on Thursday of this last week, um, I got a text message from my mom claiming that someone I know is dead. And this person I know, uh, his name was Daryl. I'm not going to say his last name. His name was Daryl. was very, very close to me. And a lot of people I look to as role mo a lot of the people I look to as role models are a lot older than me, usually. There's not too many people I run into who are my own age who I actually look up to. But this man I consider actually a role model. Um, he interacted with me a lot when I was younger. He taught me how to do. Uh, he taught me how to do um, roofing. That's mm, a very. He, he he was a roofer and he roofed our house we live in now when I was like six and he taught me how to do roofing, and he even helped. Um, he taught he let me help them. And then he, he even would pay me just for helping them and moving stuff. He, I still remember the first, uh, he gave me like 60 bucks. He gave a six-year-old 60 bucks for just for helping him. Let me tell this this man, Daryl, was one of the most influential people I know. I have never in my life, of 19 years of existence, I have never met someone with such a positive outlook on life. And, um... It, it just, if I could describe him to you, he was a man who would live life to the fullest. In everything he did. I, I don't remember a single time when he complained. A single time when he was negative, a single time where he was unhappy, and even when life got him in certain circumstances, he just was happy all the time. Um, he, he influenced hundreds of people, and there was a ton of people at his funeral today. And I remember when I was younger, he would tell me things like, you're going to be a a great man one day, you're gonna be this, you're gonna be that. And he always encouraged me when I was little. And encouragement for me is a big thing. It doesn't mean anything to me over the internet, but if it's someone I know and care about, encouragement means a lot. And when I just sit back and look at the, the positive inf influence he was in so many people's lives today, I miss him. And I can't say it about a lot of people, but he was truly one of the most happiest people I've ever known. Influential, never negative, never never negative, always positive, always had this, this outlook. And the crazy thing is he would he would strike up a conversation with anyone, no matter their sex, gender, anyone. He's in in a grocery store, he'd talk to the guy a guy in the, the, the line, he just Everyone liked him so much because of his, his positive, happy spirit. 
and today I attended his funeral. And when I walked into the when I walked into the the church, <laughs> I I planned on going in with. I, w I told myself that I wasn't going to shed a tear, even though I care for this man deeply, and he, I've considered myself very close to him, and I considered him a, a very tr true friend of mine. I walked into this church, and the moment I saw, I saw a wall. And this wall had about 50 pieces of paper, all from his second grade, um class because he taught second grade and third grade. He was a uh, Kent Meridian school teacher in Kent, Washington. All of these these little cards, these these paper things of little second grade or third graders writing how much they miss you, how saying, Daryl, you were such a nice man. You were the you were always so funny, you made people laugh, you were so positive. And then when it got to during the actual funeral when um, people were um, talking on the microphone, giving their their what's it called when they when they talk and tell you tell the memories of of the person and how much they miss them and stuff like that, I I completely lost it when a little um, a little second grader behind me. Uh, got on the microphone and just started talking about Daryl and how much Daryl influenced him. And this kid was only like eight years old, influenced him and how he was one of his closest uh, friends, a six-year-old or eight-year-old, talking about his favorite teacher. And there's there is mother there is mothers in in the at the funeral who talked about how Daryl helped with their children in making them an A student when they flunked at spelling and math, that it was, Daryl had this, this, Daryl had this, um, this mentality that it's never, ever about him. It was never, ever about him. And that, and that's, that's, that's the hard thing, is when I look at that, I'm like, I am so freaking selfish. I mean, everybody is selfish at times. But to see a man who can live his life like that, a selfless attitude of it never being about him, always being about helping and being kind and influencing other people. That's what it is. That was him. He was never focused on himself. And I look at myself, and I'm like, man, I am one selfish SOB at times. I mean, we all are, but... And after today, I really feel inspired, but at the same time, guilty of... I need to get my priorities straight and be more focused on other people other than me. And I just went completely off on the wrong topic. Um... Anyway, getting back to the topic of death. So, what I want to make this video about is why, how to get over someone who passes away. And assuming this, the person you passed away, whether you're your grandma, mother, sister, brother, assuming they had a big impact in your life and you cared for them deeply. Um, how do I say this? When someone passes away, it is terrible for you or me to sit around, sulk, and be depressed, and whine about how, oh, I wish he was still alive, I wish that, I wish this. When we sulk and get depressed over someone passing away, we are, truly, we are being selfish. Instead, what you and me should be doing is reflecting on the positive memories and the influence that that person in your life did for you. And a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people get suicidal when someone passes away. And that's not right. And getting suicidal or depressed over someone passing away, that's understandable, but to sulk and whine about it, that's selfish. Instead, you should cherish 
every single memory that you have of that person, and you should strive to live your life to what that man did for you. That's how you should deal with the death. Assuming that the person who died was influential in your life and cared and was a kind person. That's what you should do. Don't sulk. Be happy. Not be happy that they're, they're, they're dead, but be happy that they affected the people they affected, and they influenced the people they influenced, and helped the people they helped. That's what you should be happy for. And you should strive to live your life after that individual who was, this, who was, who was that great example and role model to you. And it's not too hot. I very rarely say this. The, Daryl, the man who passed away, was indeed a Christian. And I will honestly say publicly, and I, I, I don't, I have only said this, I believe, about one or two other people I know, that Daryl was a true man of God. Now, I, that will mean different things for people, I know. But if you're a Christian and you know what a true man of God is, You'll know exactly what I mean. So I just wanted to share with you that, um, how you should deal with death. Don't sulk. Don't be depressed over it. I mean, I have clinical depression. Yes, I'm sad over it. But I'm not going to let that... I'm not going to be sad over... I'm not going to be depressed over his death because... the same time I look at him and say, that man was some... that is the man who I want to represent when I am his age or in the next few years. I want to be like that. <sighs> so with that said, I'm going to end the video here. I hope this makes sense. <sighs> I'm trying to think of how to end this. The people who you really care about, make sure you tell them and express your care for them before they pass away. I mean it. Because one moment, they'll be next to you, the next day they can be dead in a car crash. Make sure you show them how much you care. <sighs>